blessed Sunday, a warm welcome to you to the worship room as we prepare our hearts to worship our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Let's just commit this time and just worship the Lord. Once again, I welcome you to the worship room. Let us trust and believe that the Lord is with us in this moment and know that He is with us every step of the way as we surrender it all to His hands. Father, You are worthy of it all. You deserve all the glory, all honor and praise. Oh, You are worthy of every song that we sing. You're worthy of all praise that we could ever bring to You, Father. Every breath that's in our lungs, you are worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. So, Father, we want to live for you every day of our lives. Have your way in us, Jesus.
Sing with me. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in
give you praise for as long as I live. I will sing to the Lord all of my life. I'll give you praise for as long as I live. your kingdom come let thy will be done I shall not give up Lord have your way have your way let thy kingdom let thy will be done I shall not give up Lord have your way have your way let thy kingdom come let thy will shall not give up. Lord, have your way. Have your way. I'll sing to the Lord all of my life. I'll give you praise for as long as I live. I'll sing to the Lord all of my life. I'll give you praise. We will give you praise. I'll sing to the Lord all of my life. I will give you praise for as long as I we will sing to the Lord all of our lives. We will give you praise. We will give you praise. Let thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done. I will not give. Lord, have your way, have your way. Have your way.
Shalom and a blessing and a blessed Sunday and a wonderful and glorious day to you. But wherever you are joining from, I want to warmly welcome you. My name is Angelo and the worship room is warmly welcoming you from wherever you are joining. Hallelujah. It truly is a blessed day. Even as we worshiped our Lord and Savior, even as we sang those songs, it's beyond the lyrics as I always far more greater than songs that we sing. You know, it's far more important to understand beyond the words that we sing as to whom the praise belongs to, whom the worship belongs to. Hallelujah. So today, I want to be able to share with you, even as the title said, of getting out of our comfort zones, getting out of your comfort zones, trusting and believing that he will see us through. So even as I share this, I want us to understand why do people, why do people hesitate to get out of comfort zones? See, many are very happy being in one's comfort zones, but the moment you go into like the vast blue ocean of one's next level of the journey, the fears come in. Why is that? Because we are going into the unknown. When we tend to go into the unknown, we tend to usually, you know, allow that fear to steep in. We tend to get stuck in that moment. See, even as I welcome you for this week's message from the worship room, I'm led to share this. Beyond all things, as we together, each and every time we go live from this worship room, as I always am encouraged to let you know that this ministry does not belong to me. It belongs to God. And this very platform of the broadcast, even as we go live in these days, of the broadcast solely is for one purpose. And it's to give glory to God. And with thanks for all that he does in my life and in yours. We partner and join as followers of Christ to go into his word to see what it says on how we can progress and on how we can progress forward on this journey together. Discovering all that God has for us. To discover the very essence of our very being. Of who we are. To find the answers we look for so dearly sometimes in times of disarray from knowing and being reminded of our identity in Christ as I always say every week week in week out and to know the purpose of our lives to its driving force to learn to trust and obey this word that is far more than just some best seller as it is known to many in the world but to act Surely believe that it's our very breath of life. From the moment we accept our Lord and Savior, it becomes our navigation book, like that to a pilot or a sailor, with all the right coordinates. It becomes the instructions we need to look after our very bodies, that the Lord reveals is the temple of the Lord, where he dwells in, within us, and how we ought to look after it. It is like if it is a medical book to a doctor. The very blueprint with all the calculations and measurements of life. Like the blueprint drawing done by an architect. But here is the greatest architect of all creation, which we believe the creator of heaven and earth, of the very universe we live in. So today as we go into his word, my encouragement to you is allow every other distraction, discouragement to lay low. Turn off everything that may disturb you or distract you in this time. And may the Holy Spirit be our guide in this time. I believe this message of the gospel of our Lord Jesus challenges both the believer and the seeker. Because I tell the seeker, because trust me, when 
even believers of Christ and followers of Christ sometimes say, you know, there are unbelievers out there. Trust me, everyone believes in something. We need to refrain from tagging people as unbelievers, but to know that they are seekers, they're seeking something or another. So I believe that Lord Jesus is challenging both the believer and seeker to evaluate their life in this time, in this very time that we are in, in this pandemic. To look and see if there are things that are keeping us from truly living for God. And for those that are living for many other things. Trusting in many other things but have lack. They're stuck. It strives to get them to cast off some of their comforts. And place their faith in the purpose and will of God by moving out our comfort zones so today even as we go into God's word I want to be able to challenge you to stay focused in this time hallelujah and turn your Bibles to the book of Philippians Philippians in the New Testament hallelujah Turn your Bibles to Philippians 4, 11 to 13. And let's read that. See, note that I speak in respect of want. For I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound where everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need I've put up the New Living Translations for all of us to read where it says not that I was ever in need for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation. Whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Where we sometimes and all times as believers, we, believe, we, we declare, we believe and declare to say, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13 Getting out of our comfort zones. See, we all have a comfort zone, whether we like to believe it or not. We all have a comfort zone. But trust me, in this time, even as we're stuck, we're stuck in the stages of our lives, we're stuck in many areas where we can't go out in certain nations. We're all on a lockdown. We're on a travel ban and whatever you may call it. And anxiety has built up in many, whilst others have just started to step out. Again, anxious, not knowing what to expect. But we all have a comfort zone, an area that is our own private space. That's what people have kind of built around in this day and age. A space where no one else is welcome. I've seen this, I've witnessed it, I've heard it. Any infringement can cause major disaster. God is calling us to leave our comfort zone. But it's not that easy, is it? It's never easy. It's not just hearsay. It's not like where you can say and someone just moves away. Reluctancy, hesitancy. When we go back into God's word, when we look into God's word, we truly believe where we witness something in the second book of the Bible in the great Exodus. The Hebrew children, they were comfortable in Egypt. We know that they were comfortable in Egypt because as 
for those that have read this over and over again, who've gone through many studies, we know they had houses, land, safety, security. They had all the comforts of home or what they would call home. But they were in a land that wasn't theirs. They weren't in a land that belonged to them. God was calling them back home. He was calling them to a place they had left almost four centuries, four hundred years prior to that. A place that no one remembered. None of them, through the generations that had gone by, they didn't remember. They had to leave their comfort zone. But it was not easy. It was not an easy task to leave Egypt. We know the story when we look into the book of Exodus, the second book of the Bible, that is, the struggles they faced, the hardships they had to endure. And in the time, in the time, the generation that was around that time of Moses, when all was prepared, there was much turmoil and plagues they had to witness prior to the exit. Before they could just walk out, they had to be obedient to the instruction given by the Lord by staying indoors. It was not easy. It was never easy. After much had passed by one last move, which was tough, but God had to do what he had to do. Try to imagine ourselves. Now, this is a tough one. Try to imagine ourselves during that time. Seeing the firstborn of, the, of every Egyptian perishing. How would you have reacted? Would you have run to the aid feeling sorrow? Feeling grief, perhaps even anger towards God of how cruel? He could have been. But God did what he had to do in all his authority and the instructions had to be followed. Think about it for a while. For it's never thought of. We, 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 we hear everything else. We hear the stories either told or watched or ministered or preached. But have you ever thought of that moment? Would you ever imagine ourselves in our emotions of current day living, if you were presented, if you were placed there to witness such a thing, what would you have done? Would you have just obeyed God's instructions and stayed indoors, marking the doorposts as we know, during the tenth and final plague, that is, as the book of Exodus documents for our sake, God passes through the land of Egypt and strikes down the firstborn of every household. Means every household. But the Jews, the Jewish people, have been told, have been instruct, instructed, I beg your pardon, to mark their doorposts, to mark their doors with the blood of the lamb they've sacrificed. It was Passover, the Passover offering. And so God passes over their homes without sacrificing their lives. Finally, when Pharaoh was defeated and depleted, he allows them to leave. It is recorded in the word of the Lord that the Egyptians did not just walk out running away. They walked out with everything and much more than what they ever could need. But only soon. Out of Egypt, they wandered into a wilderness of uncertainty. Pharaoh soon realized he wanted Israel back. So he sets out after them. Israel is caught. Mountains to the right and left. With the Red Sea in front, Pharaoh in the background. There's no place to turn. When God calls you, the way is there, whether we see it or not. I won't go into the story of what happened thereafter because those that, those that have read the book of Exodus, you know the story of Moses and how God took them through the Red Sea. See, 
the unacclaimed promise you need to understand whether you see it or not after crossing the red sea they make a 13 day journey to the jordan river here they decide they can't claim the promise they end up wandering for another 40 years Gener another generation would have gone by then they end up wandering for 40 years they accuse god of leaving them them hanging and dry getting out of our comfort zones it requires a lot of faith requires looking beyond the obstacle and the obvious it takes looking beyond the darkest moments of our lives beyond the darkness toward the light When we look through the darkness that surrounds our lives, we see that God was there all the time. Look into your life. We grumble now. We are crying now. We're just crying to see answers. The moment that answer was there, my God, you'd rejoice, but you fail to realize where does your faith rest on? Where does your faith lie in in that moment of despair? Do you doubt God when you're crying? You think that God doesn't know? We're so anxious for quick fix answers instead of just living that joy-filled life, praising him through the storms. I praise him through the storms all the time, sometimes even witnessing moments of grief in others' lives. I have I thank God for separating myself in those moments not to rejoice in others grief but I'm silently praying over them because throughout my life I've seen so much of this happen especially and in a majority case in children of God who followed for years and years when the level of maturity in faith should be so high understand when we look into the book of john chapter 14 18 what does god say what does jesus say i will not leave you comfortless i will come to you god did not call us to be comfortable he called us to be He never called us to be comfortable. You know sometimes I hear people saying, "God, you know, it's so not fair." Please show me in God's word for those that follow Christ which portion of scripture ever talks about fairness. He's a faithful God. He's not a fair God. He's a just God. He is just He loves unconditionally but he is just. There is no fairness. He never talked about fairness. Human beings developed that thing from all extractions. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you in the right moment and the right time because his time is perfect. In verse 18 it says no I will not abandon you as orphans another translation of god's word i will come to you in every moment to trust and believe that he will come to us he will not abandon us if we look at john 14 verses 15 to 18 through his word it says if you love me obey my commandments and i will ask the father and he will give you another advocate Here Jesus is promising the Holy Spirit upon his ascension. He says, "He is the Holy Spirit." He says this to the disciples and his followers, but he wanted this message spread, which is why we continue. We means not I, it means you and I both, all of us who accept Christ as our living savior. We're meant to carry that message through. We're meant to continue on sharing that undiluted message that is and was priority in our lives as a mission 
as followers of Christ, as disciples of Christ. To follow after him. In Christ alone, our hope is found. No one else. To know that Jesus says, but you know him. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you when you call upon the Holy Spirit. No, I will not abandon you as orphans, as we read before in verse 18. I will come to you even in times of distress. I sometimes see today in a greater way, not the seekers out there, but the ones who follow and believe in Christ and read his word day in, day out sometimes. Sometimes meditating, fasting, we do many things. But I'm telling you, in these most trying times, and truly after years of this walk, to faithfully see it through. After years of this walk, this is the time you rise as he commanded you to not be waiting upon someone else. Not to follow behind someone else blindly, thinking it is how the system is. For Jesus himself came to break down systems and get all to follow just after him, to obey and follow his commandments. Not what gets interpreted, but what it truly says, his word. I personally have learned in whatsoever state I am in, therewith to be content. Let's read Philippians chapter 4 verse 11. Hallelujah. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe. Or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. Says Jesus. See, when we look into Paul's life, later on in the New Testament. Paul was an expert at being outside the comfort zone. There is nothing comfortable about being shipwrecked. He was shipwrecked. There is nothing more comfortable about being stoned, beaten, imprisoned, snake bitten, left to die, being shackled or being in chains. He realized he didn't have to be comfortable. He just had to be content. He realized God had a purpose. God had a purpose in his life. Whilst I was preparing this message a couple of days ago through prayer, this is something that I really want to share because the Lord gave me this vision. It's not some insight that I'm just going to rattle on, but this was so clear. I tried to get an image out of it to show you, but... Thank God that I couldn't find because I didn't want to distract you. I honestly did try to find it. Not even Google could find it. <laughs> but it was of a ship. And right around the ship on that vast ocean, there were these small vessels. And as I looked closer through what I was seeing, I realized that these were life rafts each with a variety of names you know even in movies when you see these life rafts and lifeboats you see the very name that's tagged on the side of it as an identity tag is the same that represents the ship that it was connected to the very ship it belonged to and each were kind of afloat yet moving with the tide the big giant ship was honking its horn and trying to reach the rafts, asking them to row toward it. Yet they kept staying where they were. From that through the vision, I saw this great big hand move toward it, towards the rafts reaching out to save. And I realized what was happening, what was taking place. It was so clear, yet I was like almost in tears. God was reaching out to each vessel from where he was as he is omniscient. 
we know that God is omniscient. He can reach everyone at the same time being in the same spot. God allowing God to be at more than one place at a time. And he could reach out to each of those vessels, reaching out his hand. Yet the vessels kept afloat, trying to reach another destination more like. In our lives, I see God's church scattered amongst the nations with brands, labels, amongst many platforms. And God is trying to get us all on the same platform to be in the safe of his presence yet many have found their identity in many others and many other directions that the comfort zone they are in prevents them from reaching out to the hand that stretches out trying to prevent us from going abroad it is time to get out of our we need to realize that God's calling doesn't always put us in a comfortable position. It doesn't make everything nice and cozy. It doesn't make everything perfect. And it doesn't always make sense. But it always makes us better. It always brings contentment. It, I'd rather be uncomfortable and saved than comfortable and lost. Say that again. Imagine, you'd rather, would you rather be uncomfortable and saved than comfortable and lost? You've got to understand that coming into your calling when you trust the Lord and when you understand who you are through that identity in Christ. Coming into your calling means coming out of your comfort zone. Not a lot of life-changing things happen when inside a comfort zone. And that, to many, is okay, but are stuck. They become trapped. They become trapped. See, in life, I want to encourage some of you, and I believe the Lord is speaking to some of you some of your hearts that most of life's changes come when you are broke. When you are broken and at the same time broke. When your life, life's greatest struggle, when you find yourself in the valley like never before, when you don't seem to have the resources you need at that moment, an anxiety fills up. And you being in that moment, you tend to worry. You tend to daily start worrying and allow that very thing to seep in. Worse than the pandemic that we're facing. That anxiety is far worse, I tell you. See, throughout history, we see that it's when we are challenged that we tend to truly move out of our comfort zones to pursue or go after. So if you are wondering, how am I going to swim against the tide I am facing right now? How am I going to climb this mountain that I'm stuck halfway through? See, the truth is, when you are at your most challenged, when you're at your most challenged, sometimes when you have the greatest opportunity to make a life-changing change. So the comfort zone seems great, but outside of the comfort zone is the rest of life. Trouble is what you need to understand. Are you ready to pursue beyond those moments? trouble that you face are you willing to keep pressing on and keep pressing on through the challenges that you face praising him through the storm trusting and believing understand that when we face these situations he hasn't switched off he's simply watching us because he has given us something called the authority 
for those that are led to minister and preach and share, it's not just for you, but you teach it so that others will rise. Because it's everyone's duty to understand that beyond this labeling of fame, of all those, the fivefold and everything else, the greatest commission that each and every one of us has is that one word that God gave us through his son. That one word that we've been given as instructions. That one word that gives us life. That one word that heals. That one word that sees us through. That one word which is a strong foundation. That one word which is built on a rock. That one word that supplies every need in our lives. That one word that gives us direction. When we start to read that word, it becomes part and parcel of our daily life's instructions where you won't be looking to Google, you won't be looking at WhatsApp, you won't be looking at social forwards and social media messages that keep cropping up every single day wondering if it's true or not. Understand what the word of the Lord says, keep it at hand, and what this says. You need to understand physical word. I thank God I try to reach out to mine with every resource. I thank God for this more than the digital book. This book this will always outweigh this. This device has everything. The good, the bad, the ugly. It has everything out there on the world wide web. We can be so easily distracted the moment good news comes, we're excited. The moment bad news comes, the moment bad news comes, we're struck. Confusion, everything sets in. You put this on a weighing scale, this will always overpower us, no matter what. We need to understand which side are we on, which direction do we follow. When you accepted the Lord, what was it that you said? Do you truly believe to follow after him every day of your life? Not just meditating in his word, reading it, praying in the morning. All those things are great. But do you allow this word to settle? If you allow the word to settle in your heart, it won't just settle and be there. It's life transforming and changing. You know exactly what it says, but you need to daily. The Lord didn't say read the word in January and try to read it again probably at the end of the year prior to the season or try to get back to the, the next January. Daily. Meditate on his word daily. Meditate on his word daily doesn't also mean that you just memorize this word and read it and separate everything else, all other things that you do in your life, all other responsibilities, you need to continue. It is on top of all those things that you need to make this at the center of every instruction so that on a day-to-day -day basis, when you are facing life's challenges, little, little things, He will be in you. The Holy Spirit is there to give you fresh direction you will know exactly what you need to do even if you were drilling something I'm telling you little things it might sound silly to you but I thank God that for me my God is in everything whether it be whether I'm even hanging a photo frame I don't do it with fear other people do honestly you know sometimes they might say many many things I thank God that when I have him at the center of my life the Holy Spirit is my only guide so when I have to even hang something on a wall, I don't look to the left, I don't look to the right for permission. I take the ladder. I'm in prayer. I take the drill. I know exactly what I'm going to do so that when others might be fearful, I am with confidence. Be confident, not overconfidence. Be confident in the Lord in whatever you do. Live that life for victory so that you will finish the race doesn't matter how you started it. You might have started and you might have been excited. 
But in times of turmoil, in times of disaster, you're meant to be a living example. Understand, our life is meant to be a living testimony and not of how much you give others. Irrespective of all the other wonderful things we do for others, how do you walk the journey? That needs to reflect. You need to be victorious. You can't be defeated. You're allowing the enemy. You're allowing the enemy in those moments to rise in victory. Praise him through everything. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice and make Jesus at the center of every conversation, even with family, and let it be joyful. When you're spending time with your family, let it be let joy Fill with the face. Be excited for the day that you're living in. Get out of that comfort zone. Be healed in the name of Jesus. When God also gives you instruction even for that healing, there are certain times he tells you what to do. Yes, you stand by faith, but there are instructions he gives. Don't be confused by viewpoints and opinions. But I tell you, When you are most challenged sometimes, when you have the greatest opportunity to make a life-changing change, pursue, keep pressing on. And I want to leave this with you because a life-changing decisions are often made outside the comfort zones. Do not be deceived to trade comfort for growth. Comfort and leisure Though good can be very misleading. Let's keep pressing on during these challenging times. And know that God is with us. He's with you and he's with my friend. He will not abandon or forsake us. But we need to allow one thing to arise in and out of our hearts. That is faith. In abundance. And the courage to let go of our comfort zones. To move forward to where he wants us to be. So let him lead us to that exodus of our journey forward. And until we meet again, I'm Angelo from the worship room to tell you that God loves you. He's with us. He will never abandon us. He will always see us through. Trust and believe that God will always be there to speak to you. He's always available, ever willing, always. So trust him and be with him to understand that he loves you. Constantly trusting and believing. Hallelujah. So until we meet again, may his shalom peace be upon you. And may God be glorified. And until we meet again, have a blessed week. May his grace be sufficient for you. And may the Holy Spirit be your guide at all times. In Jesus' name.